Good morning. This is Dave Hammer, an amateur blacksmith with some experience I'd like to share with you. This video covers the making of a Super C Propane Forge floor and doors. Please read this information and take it seriously. This is a forge floor ready to install in the Super C. Here you see how it is installed in the Super C forge over one inch of thermal blanket. It should sit about a quarter of an inch above the shelf. I make these floors with a rammable refractory that I buy from Harborson Walker. It is sold in a 55 pound box of a refractory that comes in a dough-like consistency that must be tamped into a form and somewhat cured before it's put in the forge. This forge is not damaged by the flux I use for forge welding. A single box, 55 pounds, contains enough refractory to make several small forge floors. All right, let's get started on making this floor. I like this refractory because it it um, stands up to the flux used during forge welding. It doesn't hurt the floor, but you have to know that forge welding with flux leaves a big mess on the floor. I like to have extra floors available because I don't do that much forge welding, so occasionally I end up changing the floor. I've often thought of having a couple forges uh, just so I don't mess up the one I use normally. Keep working it. This has to be tamped very aggressively otherwise this floor will not stay together. I think they use air tools when they when they put these things in normally. Let's keep working it. You can see I'm getting a fairly decent mix. That's a piece of solid steel. Anything to get it pushed down consistently. Time for a bigger hammer. We'll see in a second how I dome this. Get a piece of heavy plate. Just hold it. Do it from each side. Not rocket science. I'm sure that there's lots of um, materials you, you can make floors out of or just cut a floor from um, ceramic board. If you do that, make sure that you get high temperature materials. I don't use bricks because I want my floor to be as wide as it can be in the forge. Bricks will generally come four and a half inches wide. I'm moving that around. It's kind of hydraulic, so you can move it around some. Get something to work the edges. Just push them down.
after you're satisfied you have it rammed enough, take the uh, form apart. I love these tools. Get stuff out of your way. And work on those edges. Push them in. Don't be sure you push them in. And trim that. When this is all ready. To do the, the initial curing, I mean, if you have a, <clears throat> a fancy oven, uh, use it. But uh, I use a kitchen oven, 350 degrees for three hours, and then run the auto clean. Um, if, you, if you don't have an auto clean, don't use your oven. We're going to work on doors next. First measure so you get the right, you know the height. My, my doors are never totally parallel, so, or my railings are never totally parallel. I figured out how to do that, but on this uh, forge I hadn't done it. Soft fire brick. Uh, I talk about 2300 and 2600 degree brick. I actually think that the 2300 is probably better because it's going to be a little tougher. It's not going to break quite as easily, and besides that it's a little cheaper too. Just use a handsaw. Use a handsaw. Don't use your good woodworking tools. Uh, I buy tools at yard sales for this kind of work. Buy a handsaw for three or four dollars. Then you can use a um, farrier's rasp to uh, trim it up. And we'll, you'll see we'll actually use that far farrier's rasp to shape it also. We have to taper these ends. I just put an approximation on there. Actually. I've done enough of these, I don't even need to, to, um, to mark those. Just take the rough side of the farrier's rasp, work it. You could cut these, and I have uh, these angles also with the saw. You just have to just take it easy. Always do this, drop in that um, dust into a box of some kind. And you should be wearing a mask. I don't like to have air moving when I'm doing this. This isn't nearly as um, hazardous, I don't believe, as some of the other materials we're working with, but, but it still is hazardous. You, you really need to read the MSDS and make a decision on how you want to protect yourself. Make four of these, fit them in. We're going to work on our horizontal opening next. I start out with this, I'm working with a full brick. Mark, mark it so you could cut a, a, um, cut a slot out of the side so you can slide that in. Just use a saw. Be careful you don't go too deep. You'll see later that I went a little bit deep. It doesn't matter that much as long as you don't break it um, or you don't want it broken. We're going to be coating these with uh, with a slurry. So um, a little cut, a little cut too far isn't going to hurt anything because the slurry toughens it up. This is what we end up with with just one cut and. I'll show you what I want is something a little better. If we left it like this, we'd have fire licking at that shelf, pushing down in that corner. So this is what I want. I want the bottom of that brick going over the, the um, floor, just maybe a half an inch or so. So we have to do a little more cutting. To clean the dust off, 
I just take a, a, a board and hold a, each of the bricks over the cardboard box and tap it lightly. Not hard. These things are, are fairly fragile. I consider these soft fire brick consumables. I don't expect them to last forever, and they don't. Um, I like to have more than one piece as my horizontal door, so I, this I'll cut in half. Then I'll use a, a rasp to uh, kind of knock all the edges off. Cleanup's important. You do not want to be breathing dust from this or any other chemicals we're using. I always use um, damp rags to clean this kind of stuff up and sweep it up. Um, here I'm just pushing a dry rag into the into the box, but I'll come back with a wet rag to uh, clean that top. And I'll use this is so you don't want to use a uh, forced air to blow this stuff. You don't want to use a vacuum cleaner unless it has a HEPA filter. And I'm serious about this. You want to get all this dust out of here. If you don't get the dust out of here when you light this, it's going to be burning that dust and pushing it out into the air and you're going to be breathing it. So you want to clean this stuff. Next we're going to put uh, slurry on these brick. Now on the on the horizontal doors we're going to put it on all sides. Don't forget that first you need to use a 50/50 colloidal silica water mix to condition it ready. Then mix the slurry. This slurry actually is a little thin, but it does need to work in. You need to work it in. You want good coatings here. All sides of these horizontal bricks. We're only going to coat um, three sides of the, or I'm recommending you only coat three sides of the the, um, the doors for the ends. I've coated them all and I've, and I've had a few problems and I'm wondering if um, I don't end up with um, steam trapped in there. So as for now, in a way, I'm saying don't put slurry on the top or the bottom and only put it on one side. And the side that you put it on is the side that goes in toward the center of the forge. These brick, as I said, I consider consumables. If you tip this over, um, like if it was sitting up on a table and you tipped it over, it'll it can break. If they do break, we'll be able to repair them. Uh, this shows coating everywhere. Um, please just coat it as I said before. This is something you might see after use or if you if you tip one over. See that little crack there? Just pull it apart and coat it with that 50% solution and then apply liberally a coat of slurry on both ends and then push it together and hold it. It's hard to see here but you can see a crack that's been repaired. Just uh, two or three images here of this um, forge and fired up and in use. Good luck. I love these forges. Thanks for watching.